Welcome to a brief discussion of unit conversion. In this presentation, I'll attempt to show you how the factor label method, also sometimes called unit analysis, can be used to convert a value from one set of units into another. This is very useful in mathematics and science in particular, but has very versatile technique which can be used in really any application of mathematics. So let's get started by thinking about some basic mathematical principles which we're going to apply to our problems later on. First I'm going to start with an equation which is going to look almost silly, it's so simple. And that is x equals x. Now keeping in mind that x in this case is a value, not just a number. So a value will have units associated with it. For example, 2,000 pounds equals one ton. Each of those values, the 2,000 pounds and the one ton, would be equal to one of these x's. Now because they are equal to one another, I can place one over the other and the ratio should be equal to one in theory. Now I'm going to remind you of a very simple property of mathematics and that is the identity property of multiplication which tells us that any value times one is equal to itself. And since we've already determined that placing equal values one over the other results in a ratio equal to one, we can substitute this ratio and still retain the identity rule. So any value times a ratio of equal values is still equal to itself. This means that I can multiply an equation, for example, by one mole of carbon over 12 grams of carbon, or by one liter over 1,000 milliliters, or by one gram of water over one milliliter of water. Each of these values can be used within a chemical calculation without changing the overall value of what it is I'm modifying by doing so. And this is the root principle on which unit conversion and unit analysis work. And this is best demonstrated by example. So let's take a look at the sort of question that you might encounter in a basic chemistry course. For example, how many moles of carbon are in a six gram sample? To determine the answer to this question, we'll need to know first, where it is we're shooting from, and second, where our target lies. So at the left edge of the paper, I'm going to place the value that I've been given, 6 grams of carbon. And at the right edge of the page, I'm going to place the value, or at least the units of the value, that I would like to determine. In this case, moles of carbon. In order to use the factor label method, or unit analysis, I need to come up with a term which will cancel out grams of carbon as though they were being multiplied or divided, and which will add moles of carbon to the result. So I'm going to take my uh, identity rule of multiplication, which tells me I can multiply by x over x, and I'm going to use the one mole carbon per 12 grams carbon ratio, substituting this for one in the identity rule. Notice that in doing so, I've set up an equation in which treating grams of carbon as though it were a part of the calculation will cause it to cancel out, whereas moles of carbon has been introduced. Since this is the target unit for the calculation, I know now that I can proceed with my math. Proceeding with the math as set up, notice that one mole of carbon being 12 grams and 6 grams being my starting point, leads me to the conclusion that 0 0.5 moles of carbon are present in the sample. This is the value of factor label method. It gives us a simple internal check for our math. Let's say, for example, we had made a mistake in the setup, and instead of multiplying by one mole over 12 grams, we multiply by 12 grams over one mole. In doing so, we would generate a unit which doesn't make any sense. Grams carbon times grams carbon divided by moles carbon. This is equal to grams carbon squared per moles of carbon, a, a unit that we did not anticipate. And because of this, we know that this is not the correct setup. So using the factor label method gives us a simple way of internally checking our calculations to be sure that we get the correct answer every time.
Now let's take a look at another example. How many grams of water are in three milliliters? Again, we're going to start by writing where we begin, three milliliters, and concluding with whatever our unit is that we desire, in this case, grams. So to convert milliliters of water into grams of water, I'm going to need a unit which will cancel milliliters and introduce grams. In this case, we know these numbers because water has a density of one gram per one milliliter. Since my unit analysis tells me that I'll get the correct answer, in, at least in units, I can now do the math, and if I do this correctly, I should arrive at my answer, three grams of water and three milliliters of water. Let's move on to a slightly more complex example. How many moles of water are in that three milliliter sample? Now, in order to solve this problem, we're going to follow the same set of steps that we do before, but it's going to be a bit more complicated setting up the equation. So we'll start by writing three milliliters of water at the left, and our target, moles of water at the right. And we don't have any direct comparison which will allow us to convert milliliters and moles of water in a single step in the calculation. But we do have some useful numbers at our disposal. For starters, we know the number of grams in a milliliter of water. But analysis of this tells us that we'll cancel milliliters out, but we will not have the appropriate units yet in our equation. As written, this equation will give me an answer in grams of water. To solve this problem, I continue by adding another term to the equation. In this case, one which will cancel grams of water and give me moles of water. We also know this number. It's easily available. This is the molar mass. We're simply dividing by the molar mass of water. And in doing so, we enter a term into the equation, which cancels grams of water and introduces moles of water, thereby giving me the desired value. Now I'm free to do my math, which tells me that there are 0.17 moles of water in a 3 milliliter sample. Now let's try another one and see if you can do this on your own. Try to calculate how many milliliters there are in 1.23 liters. Pause the video and perform your calculation. And when you're ready, come back and we'll check your answer. OK, we begin by writing 1.23 liters at the left. This is our starting point. We then write our target milliliters. And we search ourselves for an equality which will allow us to convert liters by canceling them out and introduce them as milliliters. Of course, this value is 1,000 over 1. Performing my unit analysis assures me that I have the correct setup for my equ equation. And then by uh, performing the math gives me my answer. 1.23 times 1,000 is 1,230 milliliters. This is the number of milliliters within a liter. Let's try another calculation. How many meters are in 2.11 inches? Pause the video, set up and perform your calculations, and then come back to check. As usual, we're going to begin by writing our starting point on the left and our target on the right. There is no simple conversion from inches to meters, so we're going to have to go through two or more equalities to solve this equation. In searching through tables, we find a very simple equality between centimeters and inches. This ratio is 2.54 to 1. We then need to convert centimeters into meters, and we know from the metric system that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. I've set my calculation up in a way that cancels inches and centimeters, leaving me with the desired unit of meters. I now perform the mathematics, and I discover that there are 0 0.0536 meters in 2.11 inches. This is how factor label method, or unit analysis, can be applied to calculations to not only give us the correct result, but to give us a very quick, very simple internal check 
that our calculations are accurate. 